Hi, everybody. My name is John Immel. I'm the director of Joyful Billy Ayurveda. Today, we're going to talk about the Ayurvedic perspective on spelt. Spelt flour, spelt bread, uh, farro, as it's called in Italy, um, is a very interesting choice of grain, especially this time of year. Uh, it's the winter here in the Northern Hemisphere, and our body is craving more satisfying foods, more cozy foods as the holiday approaches, and spelt fits the bill. Well, what is spelt? Spelt is an ancient cousin of wheat, of, of modern wheat, and it has nearly the same flavor profile that wheat does, and, uh, and that uh, m makes it uh, uh, special as a substitute for wheat. Well, why would you want to substitute uh, wheat with, uh, with spelt? Well, spelt is lighter on digestion. It has a lower glu gluten content. It has um, lower fructans, and it's those fructans that are difficult to digest in breads and, um, and make the bread more heavy. Uh, and spelt has this wonderfully rustic uh, uh, flavor to it. Uh, so spelt uh, turns out that it's a great uh, alternative to wheat in holiday baking. If you're baking uh, Christmas cookies this time of year and you're looking for something that's not going to be as heavy on your gut, spelt is uh, a great option, uh, a great alternative. I do all of my uh, Christmas baking uh, with uh, spelt this time of year and a few other ingredients as well. Instead of uh, using refined sugars, I will uh, use something like turbinado, an unrefined sugar. It has a, a nicer nutrient profile. Uh, or uh, instead of butter, I'll use ghee in a lot of my cooking because that is lighter than butter. So in the end, you end up with spelt, uh, ghee, and some uh, unrefined sugars uh, that uh, end up being healthier uh, than a traditional baking uh, than traditional baking methods, and um, and so that way you can get through the holidays without feeling nearly as heavy. Well, let's get a little deeper into spelt and what it is, um, and uh, you know how to approach it ayurvedically. Uh, well. Uh, I said already, spelt is an ancient cousin of wheat, and it was actually the form of wheat that was used by the Roman soldiers. And so uh, it's a centuries-old grain, a hardy grain, and the Roman soldiers used it as they marched. And uh, so that should be a clue right there that spelt has this uh, ability to help you feel sturdy and satisfied. Um, and that coupled with the fact that it's lighter and easier on digestion uh, than regular wheat uh, is, an, is a, nice, uh, a nice advantage that it has. A uh, spelt generally has a bit more of a rustic uh, tenor to it. Uh, it's, uh, it's got a bit more of an earthy flavor. Uh, people will uh, toast the uh, spelt berries. Just like you can get wheat berries, you can get spelt berries, and they're uh, they look pretty much the same, almost like a grain of rice. After all, rice and wheat are in the grass family. So uh, you can take some of those spelt berries and toast them and just toss them on top of a salad for a sweet and nutty aroma. Uh, and that's uh, that, that can be great uh, this time of year. As you're roasting those spelt berries, you'll see your, uh, that they will fill your kitchen uh, with warmth. And, um, and, you know, and that, and that nutty flavor. So when you actually bite into the spelt, uh, if you roast it, you'll get the crunchiness on the outside, but on the inside, it'll be chewy and gooey. And that's, uh, that chewiness is what we like about chocolate chip cookies, right? <laughs> Crunchy on the outside, chewy on the inside, and, uh, you can get your spelt berries, uh, to have that similar, Nice mouth feel. I think of that as uh, a very attractive uh, feel. And uh, also compared to wheat, it's a little bit rougher, a little bit drier in the mouth, as you've seen with many of the uh, uh, wheat alternative breads or baked goods. You know, if you go to the grocery store, you see a whole variety these days of wheat alternatives. And 
Um, and a lot of times they're, they're a little bit drier sensation in the mouth. And I would say that spelt has that too, um, although not too much. Uh, and it's, well, why do those alternatives uh, have a drier feel? Because they don't have the gluten. And gluten is glue. I mean, it literally, it's why you can uh, uh, make, uh, put a little water in flour and, and, and make glue out of it is because of the gluten. And it's, and it's the gluten in the breads that when you're kneading the bread, you know, netting it with, with your hands, that it, it's the gluten that makes it springy. You know, if you ever uh, pull a bit of dough apart from each other, and then as it kind of snaps back into place, it's the gluten that's helping it snap uh, back in, in, into place there. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, that's why, uh, a lot of pastry bread is a really high gluten variety because it has those, uh, characteristics. Now that gluey gooeyness of, uh, of wheat is what makes wheat rise. Uh, actually as you, as the yeast starts to ferment the bread, or if you're using another leavening agent like baking soda or whatever, um, it produces air bubbles, right? A leavening agent is something that aerates the bread. And when you bake the bread, um, air expands when it heats, right? You, that's from physics, you, 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 you may remember that. Uh, so uh, the air that's trapped in the bread is what makes the bread uh, rise. And then as you heat it, it rises even more. And then it cooks, and so it can't shrink again after that. <laughs> and that... Uh, is what makes this nice fluffy bread, right? Well, if you have bread with less gluten, it becomes less fluffy. And so when you're cooking with spelt, you may need to knead the dough a little bit more uh, to uh, get the same rising action out of it. So as I said before, very similar in taste, um, but when you're baking with it, you're going uh, to have a slightly drier mouthfeel. So you want to compensate that with the other ingredients um, that you're using in your recipe. And also uh, you want to knead the dough a little more to make sure it rises properly. Uh, all right. So uh, yeah, it's that rustic flavor of spelt and the fact that spelt is usually a whole grain uh, that has given spelt the prop popularity it has in uh, health food stores. Uh, spelt is also higher in protein uh, and, and so that rusticness um, and those nutritional qualities have made spell popular in artisan breads and cereals. Uh, and yeah, so it has a cult, it has a cult following. And, um, and yeah, so uh, a little bit of the history of wheat, I just, I just want to, I just think it's so interesting. Wheat was first, first cultivated about 10,000 years ago. Uh, so it's really old that people have been growing and using wheat. Uh, and uh, yeah, just want to mention that uh, today most of the spelt in our country is cultivated in Ohio as an alternative uh, as an alternative to barley and oats for grain feed given to li livestock. So most of the spelt in this country that's produced is fed to you know fed to cows, right, uh, and other barnyard animals. Um, uh, but spelt isn't just for the birds and the and the animals; it's for it's for us too, and. Uh, and so, yeah, most of it grown in, uh, in Ohio, in the farms in Ohio. Uh, let's see here. Um, so yeah, I said this earlier, what makes spelt easier to digest? It's the lower amount of fructan carbohydrates that are in it. Um, if that means anything to you, it's those fructan carbohydrates that digest slowly and poorly and turn into gas. If you're gassy, after eating foods, it's um, it is uh, it's not the protein in your food or the fat in your food. It's the uh, carbohydrates in your food that make uh, that make a person gassy. So just remember that if you have trouble digesting regular bread, it can a spelt can uh, can be an improvement. All right, um, spelt is ultimately like wheat, heavy, gooey, and smooth. And, uh, and it's, and that heaviness means it's, even though it's lighter than wheat, it's still not good for kapha. If kapha people, uh, overdose on spelt, you know, eat too much of it, they're still going to get some of the same feelings as nor as regular conventional bread. Um, so 
If you're eating it in moderation, kapha people will notice that it is lighter on their system than regular regular wheat. And uh, and so uh, uh, so kaffas, you're not going to be eating uh, spelt all the time, but you know you're not going to live a cookie-less life, right? Or a breadless life. Uh, so on those special occasions when you want to uh, indulge, uh, you know, at your holiday parties and uh, and other times, you know, you can turn to spelt. Not a daily food for you if you're a kaffa. Uh, then you want to go with lighter grains like quinoa or millet. Uh, but as a celebration food, spelt is a great lighter alternative than wheat. So you don't pay such a big price the next morning after indulging in those foods. Fata and pitta individuals, on the other hand, benefit most from, uh, from spelt. Because of the heavy qualities and the nourishing sweetness and heartiness of spelt, uh, it's um, a very satisfying and supportive to vata and pitta individuals. Uh, those individuals need the nourishment that spelt provides. Uh, it can abate a hangry pitta appetite. And for vatas, spelt is particularly advantageous because its lightness, to, it's, it's very nourishing and light uh, for digestion. See, vatas can't handle things that are difficult for digestion. Their digestion is too weak. And so they need something that's going to be um, nourishing and light. Now, what do we normally do in Ayurveda? We increase the spiciness of the food so that it's more digestive for vata. But increasing, but choosing nourishing foods that are easy to digest is another way of doing the same thing, right? Uh, this is also true for anyone with a weak, uh, with who is having a weakness, a convalescing uh, patient, or a person recovering from an illness, or generally a weak constitution, they can benefit from the nourishing qualities of spelt uh, and, all, and also uh, due to the fact that spelt is lighter on their digestive uh, system. All right, great. So um, when we did uh, studies on spelt uh, with our students, it caused a, a constipation on a number of students, individuals, and so we should talk about spelt and elimination. Well, we found out after further inquiry that those students were uh, using refined spelt flour. And of course, all refined flours uh, lacking in that fiber can induce more constipation. But for the students that are choosing the whole spelt varieties, uh, their uh, constipation wasn't there. Um, and, they, uh, and those uh, students benefited from the anabolic and heavier nature of spelt uh, where they needed it. And that fact that it was lighter than wheat, uh, it was beneficial even for the kaffas. Uh, so, yeah, so spelt, uh, if the vata person can digest it, will uh, benefit uh, vata elimination and, uh, and won't induce uh, constipation. Spelt and in general, um, uh, let's talk about spelt for pitta. The sweetness of spelt uh, makes it very uh, pitta pacifying. It is also, um, since spelt is usually eaten in a drier form, it will absorb moisture from the uh, GI tract, which can help slow down uh, pitta digestion when it's uh, overactive and also help uh, firm up a, uh, the pitta soft stools. Pitta tends to have soft stools. Uh, so it uh, can be helpful for pitta elimination and uh, light enough for vatas and kapha people uh, usually don't have too much of a uh, trouble with uh, elimination. So, uh, but this, the, the um, sweetness of spelt can uh, slow down uh, perhaps uh, ka uh, ka even kapha elimination. All right, bread is still bread in the end, right? If it uh, uh, looks like a duck and walks like a duck and talks like a duck, it's a duck, right? And so even though uh, spelt is lighter than wheat, it's still similar to wheat. We just always have to remember that, that bread is so satisfying and so sweet that it can trigger an addiction. You know, uh, carbs can cause uh, a spike in your blood sugar level, even if it's a whole grain. So, uh, so don't, you, it just, you just have to remember that, that, you know, if you're uh, eating uh, spelt and you get that spike in your blood sugar, and gives you that boost of energy that can be addictive. A lot of people 
you know, get addicted to bread, cheese, candy, sodas, uh, coffee, for the fact that it gives you that temporary en temporary energy hit. And, uh, and then, of course, you get the crash afterwards, uh, which can lead to a cycle um, of up and down, up and down throughout the day. Uh, so be on the lookout for that, even with spelt, although it should be better than, uh, than normal bread. How can you tell if you've had too much spelt? Brain fog, lethargy, lack of motivation. And then also use this, um, use this hack to find out if you've eaten too much spelt or really anything uh, too sugary. Pay, pay mind to the taste on your tongue 15 minutes after eating. If you detect a, a kind of foul taste on your tongue, then you, want, then you know you overdid it. You know that you made your blood too sweet and as soon as your blood's too sweet, your saliva's too sweet, and your mouth becomes too sweet, and then you get too much bacteria in your tongue, and that's what you're tasting. It's the foul, toxic buildup from those bad bacteria um, that are proliferating due to the sweetness of your blood. Uh, so that's a little uh, hack that you can do in your home uh, anytime you're eating something too sweet. Just pay attention to that taste on your tongue uh, after... Um, you know, 10 or 15 minutes, and then you'll know uh, whether you should back off or keep going. All right, so uh, we talked a little bit uh, about uh, whole grains having fiber, but whole grains also have a lot of nutrition. I Most of you probably know that already, so I'm not going to talk too much more about that. I'm also just going to mention that uh, industrialized farming can sometimes reduce the quality of certain whole grains, and especially the vitamin and mineral content. So just, you know, make sure you're getting your breads from a good source, organic, um, etc. All right, let's talk just for a few minutes about cooking spelt. I said it before, you can roast it and just toss it on some salad. Um, you can roast it and then boil it kind of like rice. Um, for a little while and almost make like an oatmeal or a gruel out of it and it'll have that nice crunchiness to it. You can also use it to make bread if you're buying uh, spelt uh, flours with it. And uh, and I said earlier that when you're cooking with spelt, uh, you, you're gonna wanna, um, just to keep the same taste qualities, you might wanna balance out the slightly drier, rougher texture of, of spelt, uh, you know, maybe with, um, you know, uh, some oil, more oil in your recipe or a little more dairy or, so, or something like that just to offset that. And that'll also offset the dryness of it. But, uh, but a particular importance whenever we're discussing an ingredient in Ayurveda, and this is the, the real, um, you know, gem of today's discussion is how do you balance the qualities of an ingredient uh, so that it becomes healthy for you? Well, Here's what you're going to do to spelt. You can always add a little bit of spiciness to it. You know, make your bre spelt bread an herbed spelt bread. You know, put some thyme in it, uh, um, oregano, or, uh, you know, that parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. You know, that herb, classic herb de Provence um, uh, spice bouquet is going to help you with the digestion of something heavy, right? That's what we do in Ayurveda. Heavy on the one side, we got to balance it with light on the other. So we're going to use the spices for that. Or you can uh, make it into, um, you know, even put some, uh, you know, garlic and red pepper in your bread or, you know, get fancy uh, with it. And uh, then something aromatic. So spices don't just have to be spicy in terms of pungency, but also aromatic. I think thyme, oregano, pars those spices I already mentioned have both of those, right? The spiciness as well as the aroma. Aroma helps with upper GI stagnation. Now, bread can really bog down the upper GI because of mucus buildup, et cetera. So adding those aromatic herbs in there um, is going to help. Basil, maybe you can make a basil kind of bre uh, bread. Basil, garlic, and red pepper. Sounds delicious, right? Makes me hungry talking about it, and I, and I haven't had lunch yet. Uh, bitter taste. Uh, anytime you're eating something with bitters, I think of like broccoli rabe as a really strong bitter or radicchio, those red radicchios that you get. Um, uh, red, it's a kind of a red lettuce uh, leaf that's super bitter. I love it. 
Uh, whenever I travel to Europe, I'm always amazed at how much bitter their salad greens are. Even the same greens that we get here over there are much bitter, much more bitter, uh, much bitterer. And, uh, and that is, you know, uh, I think it's something we got to bring back. It's something we lost, appreciation for bitters. Americans, as Americans, we like our sweet taste. And, uh, and so arugula, um, broccoli rabe, uh, uh, radicchio, you know, you can have that with your slice of bread or put, um, put a, 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 a bitter lettuce leaf on your slice, slice of bread and then uh, add your sour taste too. Sour taste helps balance blood sugar level rise. This is a, something from macrobiotics that you um, add a little sour whenever you have too much sweet in something. So that sour and the bitter actually are really helpful uh, for regulating the blood sugar level spike. Uh, you know, I think of, I love to make homemade salad dressings. And think about this, folks. You can make a nice piece of spelt toast, dip it in a little salad dressing, put some of those bitter leaves on top of it. Uh, what an awesome little uh, little snack uh, little snack right there on the side of your lunch dish uh, that's really gonna satisfy you but because of those herbs and garlic and everything in the bread as well as the bitter and sour taste that are in the accompaniment with it you're gonna be feeling great after eating it uh, so uh, I want to thank everyone for listening to this talk on spelt uh, sponsored by the joyful belly school of Ayurveda uh, this is the uh, kind of stuff that we learn in uh, the Ayurveda courses. So uh, hop on uh, the Joyful Belly website and check out our courses and, uh, and uh, register if you want to do this uh, more often. Uh, I find this kind of di uh, discussion very exciting. And I'm also happy to take some questions right now as well. Uh, so feel free to, to uh, type in some questions and uh, and look forward uh, to hearing from you.